So if you've been working with stable diffusion models for a while now, you've likely to come across the term seed or seed value. What exactly is it? Well, a seed value is a random number that is used to generate a noisy image that then the stable diffusion model will gradually clean up through several steps in order to create the final output. But to kind of demonstrate the importance of the seed value and what you can do with it, we're going to go ahead and dive into some examples. So first off, I'm going to go ahead and just put it in a prompt of the word dog, and I'm using a fine-tuned model called DreamShaper 8, and I'm going to leave it at a random seed value right now of minus 1. I'm going to go ahead and click Generate. So here's our image of a dog. Uh, pretty straightforward here. Now, what was actually going on behind the scenes? To kind of demonstrate that, let's go ahead and recreate that. So you can see right here that there's a seed value, and if you copy and paste this into the box or just simply click the Recycle button, it will go ahead and generate this same exact image again. And so we're going to go ahead and generate uh, a short video of what's going on behind the scenes. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at this as it generates and then pull up the images here so you can see that it's going through its process still and then at step number one during this process oops, you can see that all it started out with was this random number so the seed value decided um, you know, in conjunction with some other algorithms here, uh, what sort of noise it should start with. So a seed value of 1 will generate different static than a seed value of whatever it was that we provided. And then as the model kind of cleans up the image, you can see how it gradually removes the noise with each step until we get our final image. It's a really neat process. So what does that mean in the grand scheme of things? Well, if you wanted to, say, share this image, or if I wanted to share it to you, and you wanted to generate the same exact picture of a dog on your computer, you can by understanding what the seed value is and all the other parameters, and then running it on your machine, and it should produce those same exact results. That's very good if you want to follow a really strict workflow or if you want to kind of adapt on an image and further make kind of modifications to it. And that's where understanding how the seed value impacts that is really important. Now, trying to modify an image based on setting the same seed value and then just modifying your prompt is a very inefficient way of kind of modifying an existing image. Uh, there's better uses for that, such as the image to image uh, or just in painting if you want to change like character expressions or even the time of day. But you can kind of make fine little tweaks by using that same seed value. Now, one of the kind of misconceptions about seed values is that people will think that, you know, seed number one is gonna provide similar outputs to seed number two as seed number three and so on and so forth. And that's not simply the case. Um, we can actually test that too. So to kind of demonstrate this is I'm gonna go ahead and just put this back to a random seed but then I'm gonna go ahead and do the seed values that go simply through one through 20 in increments of uh, two. So we should get about 10 images uh, of all seed values between one and 20 that are just for the prompt of dog. Now I will caveat this while it's processing is that there might be similarities in some instances and that could be due to a lot of factors, whether it is your prompt or the checkpoint that you're using um, and kind of how that is being interpreted to build the image. But still, we'll go ahead and take a look and see what seed values 1 through 20 uh, will look like here. So we can see right away here that seeds 1, 3, 5, and so on don't really look all that similar from one to the other. The, all the dogs look a little bit different. There's different poses, there's different settings. Some are outside, some are indoors. Um, and so on. Um, and, you know, if you wanted to see very specifically, say, seeds one through three, um, we can see, you know, what seed two was between these two and see just how similar they really are. And again, though, we can see that they all start with different noise and then ultimately uh, refine to completely different pictures of dogs. So don't ever feel like, you know, if a seed value is too close to another one that's going to cause similar images, it will not be the case. 
Um, so another thing that will affect the output of an image, especially with the seed value, is that, like I said, it generates random noise that then the stable diffusion model will continuously refine. So if I was to do a seed value of one, so I would get this image. But if I actually increase the width just by one little push up here on the um, little input field, we can see it's a completely different dog um, than if we were to go back down um, to that on the width. So that's another important thing to keep in mind. Now, here's another really cool thing whenever it comes to seed values. Uh, say, for instance, I kind of like the pose in this picture. Um, and then let's take a look at uh, seed three here. And so it creates a different type of dog that's laying outside. Well, what if I wanted to see kind of a blend of these two images? And that's where you can actually use the XYZ plot, which I talk about in another video, and actually put in a variation seed of three with my other seed of one. And then I'm going to change the variation strength. So this is a float scale. It's going to go between 0 and 1.0. And I'm going to increment it in 0 0.2 steps. And so basically what we're looking at here is if I have an image with a seed value of 1, variation strength is 0, that will return that image. And in gradual steps, in 0.2 increments, it will all the way get to the completely different image of a seed value of 3. And you can uh, kind of test this out in the XYZ plot, and then you would see how this image progresses between the two different dogs and the outputs here. Uh, so that's one way to do it. And so say, for instance, if you really liked this picture here, the variation strength at 4, you could actually just go ahead and turn off the XYZ plot, turn on to extra, put this to 0.4, and then the variation seed of three and generate that exact image and then further adapt on it um, however you might like. So uh, that's with kind of blending of seeds. Now, what if I sent you this image and you're unable to reproduce this on your machine? Well, one of the reasons for that is how the random number generator might be being used on your machine. Um, in order to generate images. So this is very dependent on the interface that you're using to use for a stable diffusion model uh, because they might use different random number generator sources. So to kind of make it compatible across many different interfaces is you're going to want to make sure that your random number generator source is the CPU and not GPU or NVIDIA. And then you can go ahead and share it with someone else. So that's kind of a high level overview of what goes on whenever you set that seed value to generate an image with stable diffusion. Now I know if you're like a machine learning expert or a computer science engineer, there's probably a lot more that's going on behind the scenes and I'll be the first to admit that that goes well beyond my realm of knowledge. Um, but at least just from the enthusiast user, if you will, uh, that's kind of how a seed value I find can really be used or leveraged whenever it comes to generating outputs. So with that, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, uh, please hit the thumbs up. If you have any questions about the video, please drop a line in the comment section below. I'll be more than happy to help out. And last but not least, consider subscribing. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.